Hey everyone. So this topic is about capillary fluid exchange uh, and more importantly oncotic pressures. Um, what you see here is basically a blood vessel here and uh, these are cells and uh, you know in between cells is what's called the interstitial space. Now there's one rule that you all have to follow in with everything. It's that water follows wherever there is higher um, osmolarity. Okay. Now, what's osmolarity? Osmolarity is basically the amount of solutes and proteins in either the blood vessel or the interstitial space. Okay. So it's made up of solutes and proteins. So the more proteins and solutes, the higher the osmolarity. The less protein and solutes, the lower osmolarity. Okay. Um, okay, now osmolarity is almost the same thing as oncotic pressure. Okay, if you have higher osmolarity in your blood vessel, you most likely have higher, you know, the same oncotic pressure. Now, oncotic pressure is though mainly made up of proteins. Okay mainly just proteins, whereas osmolarity, we count either, both solutes and proteins, okay? Oncotic pressure is like really mainly proteins. Now, again, it, wherever there's higher solutes, concentration, higher osmolarity or higher oncotic pressure, water will go there. So if there's higher osmolarity in my blood vessel, the water will transfer into the blood vessel, okay? If there's higher osmolarity and oncotic pressure in the interstitial space, the water will go there, okay? A really, really simple rule is just to think of it as um, like a party. People will go to the party wherever there's more people. So the water will always go wherever there are more osmolarity or more, more people, okay? Okay. Now, for oncotic pressure, they, they use this um, uh, symbol here, which is kind of looks like pi, okay? That looks, that's the oncotic pressure, and it's both for the blood vessel and the interstitial space. They both have their separate oncotic pressures. Now, what really makes up the oncotic pressure is, like I said, proteins, and what protein is the most abundant in the blood vessel? Albumin, right? Okay. Now, where is albumin made? in the liver, right? Okay, so if we have more albumin, we have more higher oncotic pressure. If we have less albumin, we have less oncotic pressure. Make sense? So now let's get back now. Albumin is made in the liver. Now can you think of a disease that damages the liver? Cirrhosis, right? caused by alcohol most likely. Alcohol cirrhosis, what does it do? It damages the liver. It damages it, right? So if it damages it, can we produce albumin? No. So in cirrhotic patients, what do you expect their albumin level to be like? Low. Okay. They'll have low albumin levels in their blood vessels. So if they have low albumin here, what will that do to the oncotic pressure here? It'll decrease the oncotic pressure. So if it has decreased oncotic pressure inside the blood vessel, what will the water do? Will the water stay here or will the water leave? Well, if it's less oncotic pressure and less albumin, the water will leave, okay? It'll go into the interstitial space where there's higher oncotic pressure, higher osmolarity. Okay, so that's why you see cirrhotic patients with what that what's that um, clinical uh, exam finding? Ascites, right? What does that mean? Fluid buildup in really the stomach, right? And what is that fluid buildup? You know, made of it's just water and fluid, plasma. Why is it there? Is because the blood vessels don't have the albumin to keep it in the blood vessels. And what the water does is it says, hey, you know what? There's no protein here. I'm just gonna go into the interstitial space. And that's why you have cirrhotic patients with, um, uh, you know, the ascites, um, you know, the edematous extremities, etc. Okay. <clears throat>